Hey, and we are the Coalition Loud and Proud, Outrage Porn Free, Civilly Disobedient Media. We are here at Jenks Junior High, the site of your Pawtucket School Committee. Joining me as now has become something of a weekly or biweekly tradition, uh, School Committee Chair, Head Honcho, El Jefe, Generalissimo, uh, Jay Charbonneau. Uh, as always, we thank him. It's, he, like all of us, have had a full and rewarding day here in Rhode Island. Um, thanks again for your time. Sure, no, I'm glad to be with you. So, uh, question for you. Actually, just, I've gotten asked this. What's the difference? They're getting a little rowdy over there. Um, what's the difference between a working session and a regular school corp meeting? Uh, there's really not a, a, a huge difference in both meetings. Um, it was determined probably six, seven years ago, uh, Miss Doobie actually at the time, um, that really the workload of the school committee required that we meet at least a couple of times a month um, rather than a once-only you know, monthly meeting. So um, we looked around. Other districts had this work session. We adopted that format, and, and that gives us a chance to meet twice a month um, to keep the you know the business of the school department going. Uh, give folks a sense, if it's at all possible. Uh, let's just stick to meetings. Of how many hours a month a commitment to being a member of the Pawtucket School Committee is. I mean, what 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 type of workload is this? Uh, well, I mean, a, a good month. You know, I mean, we've had meetings that have been an hour. We have had meetings that have been five hours. Um, you know, there's some. You, you know, you got to read the the dockets, the packets. Um, Committee members do their independent research. Um, you know, I would say, you know, you can spend, you know, 10, 12, 15 hours a week on it. Wow. You know, or at, at least, let me, let me rephrase that. In a leadership role, I think it, it requires that much time. Um, and and the, the other members, I, I would assume it's, it's seven, eight hours a week. Wow. So this is, uh, this is really a second job for a lot of folks. Well, I, I think these members take it seriously. They do their homework. They, they reach out. They ask questions. They, they get the supporting documents. Th that generates some questions. So, you know, and I, I'm proud to serve with these folks who, who, who dig in and take it seriously. It's interesting because, as you know, I travel the fruited plains of Rhode Island, you know, sample case in hand from town hall to town hall. Uh, you brought up an important point. I've been covering this committee now for Seems like a decade, right? But it's been about a year, a little over a year now. And what's impressive is, and, and okay, I'm, I'm a little bit of homer here, but what's impressive is the level of preparation each person brings to me. I, I've been to enough bound meetings where just folks haven't done their homework, and, and it can be embarrassing, it can be troubling. That doesn't happen here. People come ready to, ready, ready to rock and roll. Yeah, and I think that's you know that's what makes us an effective committee, and and I think. Uh, you hear in public session people asking questions and, and, and asking for clarification of those questions, and that spawns more questions amongst other members of the committee. And uh, listen, that kind of ro robust debate back and forth and, and, and folks really digging into to each topic, I think, is what has made us, uh, you know, effective. Speaking of, you know, back and forth, there was, for a, for a brief agenda, there was a lot of back and forth tonight. Uh, you know, there was a discussion about the award to uh, Colliers of a, something called the Project Manager Contract, and it led to some conversations about ongoing projects. And I ultimately opened up to that, uh, particularly with regard, I guess, to the Baldwin School. What, uh, what happened there? Yeah, so I think what you heard, uh, two separate issues, right? The, the award to Colliers for the Project Management contract for the unified high school mm -hmm. was fairly seamless that the the gmp the guaranteed maximum price for baldwin was the topic that gained some kind of traction not traction but gained some kind of discussion and and some questions by some of the members um, in the course of value engineering it appears that there may have been conversations that took place outside of the committee um, at the end of the day, what, what Shamit has delivered is a guaranteed maximum price that was in $11,000 of the initial price this committee approved. Um, so when I asked if they were what, what the material changes were, you heard there was a, a better roof, which was an add-on, and there were some deducts. So the overall price that, that we agreed to way back when to what we're agreeing to now is changed by $11,000. 
there were some items that the committee was not made aware of, and I think that's that's what led to the discussion. And that's eleven thousand dollars out of a total spend of fifty eight million. That's not bad, right? <laughs> Horseshoes and hand grenades, right? Not bad. No, not at all. Um, another source of conversation. Uh, the Shea High School update, the ongoing travails, if you will, of the Shea High School roof. What, what, where does that stand right now? Yeah, so as, as I mentioned, uh, you know, uh, Ride had indicated that they were looking for a pause on, on significant dollars being spent at Shea. The roof project, which is the next most significant thing in front of us, um, and much needed, by the way, um, comes with a price tag of about eight and a half, nine million dollars. So that, that pause or, or that denial of being able to allocate some bond money to that um, was what it, you know, was an initial denial, but now Ride seems to be uh, willing to, to at least have another conversation with us. Um, and that's, you know, we enjoy a great relationship with the School Building Authority. I think we can talk back and forth with them on issues like this. Um, they have a job to do, certainly, and, and so does this committee. They've always been uh, valued partners. And so we look forward to continuing the conversation on the Shea roof, um, and I, I look forward to providing an update at the next meeting. And speaking of a, a conversation and a, a relationship, a strong relationship, a strong bond, if you will, with the School Construction Committee, yesterday was a very, very big day in Pawtucket. Uh, a f if you will, kind of, I'll call it the financial groundbreaking for the Unified High School. Uh, the state armed up with, and we were the first to report it, uh, what was it, $50 million? How, how's that work? Yeah, it was a, uh, you know, it was a great day here in the city yesterday, a great day for the district. Um, what I heard was that uh, our stage two submission was uh, was rock solid and, and you know, uh, really won over the folks at the School Building Authority. I think you, you heard that from some of them yesterday. Uh, that award of $50 million in PAYGO, we're, we're going to undertake the largest building con project in Pawtucket history and in one of the largest school construction projects in the state history. So it was an exciting day here yesterday. I, I, you know, Again, I can't thank the governor enough and, and the General Assembly, the Speaker, the Senate President, who have allocated those dollars and you know, this is how we start to, it provides the initial funding to get going at, at McCoy. Um, and, you know, I, th I think the residents ought to be mindful that, that, you know, the budget to just to ready the land is about $25 million. Right. So, you know, a and we're still talking, we're, we're five to seven years before we see a brand new high school over there. Right. And with the, while well, there's a real potential to get up to 90% reimbursement, there's this sort of financial dance that has to take place between, in this case, $50 million up front from the state, but then the, the, the city has to bond that money. And, uh, you know, I know we say this all the time, folks can conflate the approval of a bond with the actual placement of a bond. So now the next step in, in this financial dance, for lack of a better term, uh, it's a very serious subject, uh, is for the city to, to go out for the bonding, ultimately to get money back from the state. Is that, uh, is that a good explanation for it? That's, that's probably as succinct as you can get. Yeah, I think we're at a point now that certainly the $50 million pay go, but recognize what the pay go is, right? We, the, the city still has to expend the money. Mm -hmm. And then we're, as we're submitting, as we're paying the invoices, we're submitting them to the Department of Ed and we're getting reimbursed. But there's still an outflow of money um, coming from the city side. My point again about the, the initial budget on readying the land at McCoy, that includes the demolition of the, the stadium, the grading of the land, the removal of hazardous materials. We've figured that number to be around $25, $27 million. Um, so that $50 million is, is going to go relatively quick, or as quick as $50 million can go. Mm -hmm. um, and then that's when the city will need to come out in, you know, I believe they'll do it in bands, bands of, you know, what, whatever the financial experts advise them on, $50 million or $100 million bands. And that provides the working capital to get the building actually up. Each level, each tranche, I guess is the other word, it represents a next stage in the building. So, again, people need to understand that you're looking at a multi-year, multi-million dollar process. Obviously, the sooner this gets going, the better. 
Uh, we checked at the local Home Depot. We asked them if we came by with a couple hundred million dollars, could we get a deal? They're not so bullish on that. It's pri- these buildings are getting expensive, but at the same time, this is an historic opportunity for a city like Pawtucket to engage in the kind of uh, wishful, dreaming, to reality school construction that might not ever happen. Yeah, and, and you know, and, and the buildings are expensive, right? What's expensive? I, I get the number is large, and I, I get people, but what's the alternative? What's the alternative? To leave students in Shea and Tolman? That's unacceptable. So, you know, the price of, of school construction isn't going to go down in 10 years. We're, we're pretty sure of that. Right. Um, and while, while I recognize the enormity of that number, um, doing nothing is not an option. I don't think that's an option for anybody in this city. So the taxpayers have overwhelmingly said, this is what, this is what we want to do. We're, we're behind this. I think the elected officials in the city, the state, everybody is on the same page that, that you know, our students deserve this and we're going to get it done. Well, final question of the night, and it's, it's kind of a natural segue. The fine folks at NEASC are back on the horizon, right? There's a projected visit, if I'm right or wrong, confirm if you can, um, is, is just a couple months out. And uh, the issues that really generate the need for the unified high school will simultaneously point to the challenges, and we're trying to be kind here, at, at, at Tolman and Shea are right back out in front again, aren't they? Yeah, they certainly are. And, and you know, unfortunately, not much has been done at Shea. Um, and, and we talked about that seven months ago. We talked about it five months ago. You know, uh, and here we are tonight. So the NEAS trip to the district is, you know, is within, as you said, a few months. Um, you know, we've got uh, we've got to have that conversation, and you know, and again, we we have to have the follow up conversation with Ride and see the the roof plans are done. Um, it's a question of can we get up there and, and actually get the work done. Right. And to your credit, you've consistently maintained a Shea update on the agenda, literally for every meeting. Well, I think it's important. I think you know, let's not forget the voters. There's fifty million dollars of approved bond money sitting out there for Shea. The voters approve that. So the voters have a right to know how that money's being spent. And at this point, not much of it's been spent. So I ask for the update constantly because it's that important. The, the condition at Shea High School, and at Tolman for that matter, and we, we, we focus on Shea, but, but Tolman's, you know, not in the greatest shape either. And, right. and these buildings, they either need complete remakes or we need to get the unified high school going but in the if it's going to be five to seven years on the unified high school we've got to invest dollars in shea and tolman in the meantime chairman charbonneau thank you very much we'll see you next meeting when is uh next week you have a regularly scheduled meeting same bat time same bat station yeah i believe so next week uh tuesday i think of no two weeks from uh, a week from this coming tuesday Okay, fair enough. Thank you again. I, again, I know it's a, a full day, so we appreciate you uh, bringing sort of into sharp focus a lot of the issues that are covered in a, a long, complicated meeting so that the, the taxpayers and, and the kids, you know, who, who live in these buildings, I mean, they, it's arguable that many of them spend more time in these buildings than they do at home. Uh, they deserve that type of clarity. So thank you. My pleasure. Thanks, Pat.